Howdy y'all. Could the ruins of massive temples buried through the unrelenting nature of time found throughout Mesoamerica be considered the evidence we need that the cultures which preceded our own were enlightened beyond what science previously thought possible? Could the exact measurements with alignments to the sun and stars and the intricate adobe brick construction signify that the oldest cultures of Mexico in fact had a connection with the higher power one which enabled them to create monuments to the very gods who blessed them with this knowledge? Today, we will look at the Great Pyramid of Cholula in Cholula, Puebla, Mexico. This thing is absolutely fascinating. It's hard to know really where to begin with this discussion. We are told that this Great Pyramid is the largest archaeological site in the New World and the largest pyramid in existence by volume. However, the pyramid only stands 25 meters or 82 feet above the surrounding plain. The wording in the narrative here is really interesting as it seems to indicate that historians who have explored the area believe the land surrounding the pyramid was once not as deep or another way to look at it that this pyramid was once much larger in the sense that many more lower layers were exposed. This rings true when you come to find out that for centuries, no one seemed to know that this pyramid existed, or those that did tried significantly hard to hide their discoveries in plain sight. We're told when the Spaniards first encountered this pyramid, most of it was already covered in earth and overgrowth. Instead of clearing away this growth, we're told the Spaniards constructed a massive old world style cathedral on top of the pyramid. This was built in 1574, and it goes by the name Our Lady of Remedies. That's quite a unique name, especially when we consider that this church has been a sort of remedy to the powers that be, as for the last four centuries or so, the pyramid has been essentially off limits to exploration because of this church. What is hidden beneath? We may never know entirely. Only the top three layers of a purported six layers have been discovered at all. The remaining three layers are more of a mystery and an estimation than we can really imagine today. The documentation that we do have of interior exploration comes to us primarily from sources 75 years ago or more. Due to the significance of the Our Lady of Remedies Church as a colonial monument, the pyramid below as a whole has never been excavated or restored and the pyramid portion is off limits to the greater parts of the public. Essentially, this pyramid is one giant secret. There's a lot of conflicting reports in this short narrative. One, we're told when the Spanish arrived, they discovered mass graves surrounding what they thought was a naturally occurring hill. To their surprise, as they excavated the graves, they discovered a couple of elongated skulls, and furthermore, they discovered that beneath the earth and soil was actually a significant construction made with earth bricks. However, beyond this information, we have no documentation done by the Spanish regarding any of their further discoveries. We're told, almost as if it was done in the night, the church then appeared on top of the pyramid, and from there, little discussion of the pyramid exists in Spanish historical records. We're told by the 19th century, when the first official documents regarding the pyramid come to light in the major portions of the world, that the pyramid itself was completely covered with earth and overgrowth, with only the church on top visible. The first excavations were to prove that the site below the church was in fact of historical value. However, in the same narrative were told excavations of the graves surrounding the pyramid continued for centuries, from early Spanish occupation culminating with Adolf Bandelier, a Swiss-born American, who arrived to Cholula in 1871, also there to collect skulls. Bandelier is considered to be the first person to attempt even a small excavation on the pyramid, attempting to make precise measurements while also taking field notes. Bandelier would also then discover two more earth mounds nearby that were also both completely covered over and in fact both built with adobe brick. The true but minimal excavation of the massive pyramid began in 1931 when Mexico was in a state of unrest. We're told numerous tunnels were dug into the pyramid because no one could seem to figure out where the entrance was located. 
In my opinion, that is because the entrance is much further underground. But I digress, as the explorers tunneled into what they considered to be the lowest layers reachable of the pyramid, they began to notice that the consistency of the mud bricks began to change. The lower the level of the pyramid, the more the mud bricks are said to contain the rare and nearly indestructible material known as obsidian. Again, could this indicate the true nature of this construction? And furthermore, as we're told in this narrative, the structure was built in layers beginning in BC times. Could the lowest layers, being more advanced than the top layers, indicate that at one point or another, the earliest people in this area had some sort of advancement occur, whether material or spiritual, which made it possible to construct with obsidian bricks? Just a little fuel for thought. Overall, this structure, even by modern day interpretations, is absolutely massive. We're told the base, as agreed upon by scholars today, sits at 300 by 315 meters or 984 by 1033 feet, creating a total estimated volume of at least 4.45 million cubic meters. For reference, the Great Pyramid at Giza has a volume of roughly 2.5 million cubic meters. According to historians, the Great Pyramid of Cholula was once the second most occupied location in all of Mexico, with a population exceeding 100,000 people. My question to you is, what exactly do you make of this massive superstructure? Is this a gift from the star people? Take into account the massive graves, as well as the elegant burials of those with the elongated skulls surrounding this pyramid. Could the current narrative be accurate at all? Do you think there's more behind the colonial church built atop the pyramid, which essentially stopped anyone from realizing the pyramid was even here? Was this done on purpose? How much of this pyramid and the surrounding area are man-made? How large do you think the pyramid truly is underground? And what do you believe the pyramid's true purpose was? To wrap up the video, I'd also like to briefly look at some of the oldest known photographs of Puebla, the capital city of the state of Puebla, and take in some views from the Old Town District. We will be looking at the beautiful cathedral of Puebla City, which was written to be the eighth wonder of the world upon its completion, as well as many of the other unique constructions in the area. While these buildings have signs of previous indigenous occupation and foundations, we're told in this narrative that Puebla was in fact a planned city or manufactured city built entirely in an unoccupied area never before developed. We see such things as victory arches, paved streets, epic masonry, and other features that are reminiscent of many of the oldest and finest cities of the old world. As we look through Puebla, even with a history dating back to the 16th century, can you imagine that the indigenous people of this area did not have an immediate effect on the construction? Just a little more food for thought. We're also told that the flower wars of the indigenous people occurred where Puebla City sits today. What's strange is, within this narrative we're told that the flower wars only occurred for the last 50 years or so before Spaniards arrived to the area and we're told that the indigenous people did not build structures for the flower wars which in themselves were more of an Olympic type of games rather than an overall battle. The Flower Wars consisted of young men, mostly from the aristocratic families, who would engage in one-on-one -on -one competitions to decide who would be sacrificed to the gods. Take away the narrative from that, and the games appear much like a precursor to the modern Olympic games and other American sports games, if not a continuation of the ancient Olympic Games themselves. But how could the ancient Olympic sports wind up the whole way in Puebla, Mexico with the indigenous people? Again, I'll leave that answer for you to decide and tell me about in the comments down below. Overall, I just wanted to touch base with you and share this awesome find with you. It's literally a structure that appears to be beyond even the most intricate of imaginations. The pyramid jutting out from the earth as if it was positioned there by some sort of miracle thousands of years ago. But what do you make of the Great Pyramid of Cholula? 
what stands out to you the most about this narrative. I've provided some reliable links for you to scan the current narrative down below, and I just wanted to say thank you for being here, guys. We've just reached 37,000 subscribers, and I'm really excited to keep discovering more facets of our ancient past to share with you. My last video on the Tartar tactics of war used against the Teutonic Order at the Battle of Grunwald is a video that I'm proud of, but according to many of you, it lacked any sort of questioning of the current narrative, which is something that I'm always looking to do, and many of you were looking for more food for thought in the next video, so that's what I tried to do here. Today's video was meant to get into the meat and potatoes a bit more and dive into something which takes a little more imagination and a little more effort and a little more knowledge of the old world to begin to understand. Hopefully, I've made this an enjoyable short video for you, my family and my friends. Please hit the thumbs up button if you are still with me and leave any of your thoughts regarding the Great Pyramid of Cholula down below. Thanks again for being here. Cheers.